Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be starting a new series and those series are going to be more or less all around uh, all different types of PLCs that there are on the market. And we're going to be making two part video for each PLC we're going to be testing and the first one is always going to be the wiring, introduction with the rig and sort of checking out a little bit with the software and the second video we're going to dive into programming itself create uh, basic programs and upload them into the uh, PLC and test them on our rig and by the way the rig will be uh, available online very very soon if you wish to get one for yourself so uh, definitely check out the link in the description below so uh, everything else related to these videos everything I could possibly think would be beneficial for you it'll be in the description below like uh, the software we're going to be using uh, for actually the PLC we're going to, the first PLC we're going to be doing is going to be FX3S PLC which we're going to be programmed with a USB uh, lead using a GX Works 2 software which will be part two parts going to be available one with software and one without the software so, so two two options there's going to be available if you wish to uh, get one for yourself and pretty much get stuck in and start playing with it the, this basic this basic rig uh, what is uh, we're going to be starting at this is going to be a, what they call an entry level rig there's uh, actually three more uh, three more uh, rigs that I'm planning to build so going all the way to really super advanced one where which is actually quite expensive but if anybody wants to ever get into that one, which we will do eventually, so we we'll definitely be checking that out. But this basic rig is pretty much is more or less for the conveyor systems, where you can get like uh, indexing going on, and and then then uh, we've got the counter on there. We got a couple of sensors, and there's all sorts of things we can play. So pretty much prepare the PLC for uh, some form of a. Um, uh, conveyor belts and things like that, or any other system, but usually because conveyor belts, and then and I'll be because I've got one program in mind that I'm going to be working on that I'm going to be playing at work, which I'm going to not play, we'll be using that work for one of the belts, so I'm going to be definitely checking this out on this rig. So, uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the first, uh, before we get started, let's get familiarized what we've got in here. In here is our power supply, this is where the power is going to come in and uh, in here we have uh, two quad bridged blocks in here which we are going to be using later on uh, for spurring of 24 volt signals and uh, then we've got two power supplies, I'll talk about that in a minute, why do we have two and then we got the uh, FX3S uh, PLC from Mitsubishi, it's a DS version so uh, we're going to be using a uh, 24 volt supply for it and then we have uh, our output station in here and then we've got input station in here and in here we got a, our, a control belt which got a two beamed uh, uh, 24 volt DC a uh, normally closed uh, sensors and also in here we've got a uh, pulsar we call it the pulsar we're going to be using that for accounting or for encoding or whatever you wish to uh, program up with and then on we've got the DC motor that actually runs the belt and then we've got the management board in here that manages the belt itself sort of a uh, control uh, receives the basically just manages the sensors and uh, motor and on and offs and things like that and that's pretty much this is what the session it is and before you get starting with any sort of a panel uh, always work out what sort of components you're going to be using sort of lay them out come up with a good layout for the for, for the panel put down your uh, a, a cable trays and then put down your DIN rails and start plugging in all your components on it. So from there on, this is where we are going to be actually starting. It's the wiring. And the wiring is the key aspect, I think, for uh, actually understanding uh, of uh, how uh, controls works. And once you do that, because with the wiring alone, I do believe you will get a lot more into your head than just somebody trying to explain to you. So uh, for the wiring, first things first, what we do is uh, run in our core wires. As you can see down there, I have run these uh, live wires already into the power supplies. But from the power supplies, from there on, we're going to supply power to PLC. We're going to supply the negative for our outputs. We're going to supply the positive for our inputs. We've supplied the boards and things like that. And once the supplies are sort of uh, done up, pretty much uh, given to everybody, uh, then we can start working on our control wires. So that's first thing what we're going to be doing. So let me get the, all the power wires in and I'll talk you through once they are in. 
Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the core cables are in. Let me show you a little diagram for our little board in there. This is what it looks like. As you can see, we have two 24s and two zeros. And why is that? And this is where the play of uh, two power supplies comes in. So basically, the, the board, the, the, this has been manufactured to make sure that the DC motor has nothing to do with uh, the inputs because DC motor it's inductance so it causes it causes all sorts of the trouble so you want to keep it away and that's why the manufacturer has uh, has made sure that it is separated away so that's why we have two uh, power supplies in here and always when i build the panels i'd like to keep my inputs and sensitive electronics like sensors and things like that on one power supply and outputs and things like that on the other power supply just to make sure because anything to do with ductance will mess with your uh, sensors, will mess with your inputs. I mean, and trust me, I've learned some very bad lessons in my career. So uh, to to make sure these things are separate away, especially things like contactors, if they don't have certain pressures on it, Jesus Christ, there's some. Uh, I've seen panels where like four or five hundred pound uh, uh, transducer, uh, not transducers, the uh, pressure sensors, electronic pressure sensors, just literally just goes dead within a week so uh, yeah so uh, whatever you do try to make sure that you use uh, try to separate away outputs outputs away from your inputs is the uh, uh, use two power supplies as, as much as you can this is what this station is all about as well to use two to make sure everything is, is clear and as you can see the manufacturer in here made sure that's the case as well so what we're doing here we call one power supply as s or one power supply as t give big advice ladies and gentlemen do make sure you use cable markers because trust me if you are messing something up and you try to source what is what you will be struggling so do utmost you can to use a uh, uh, cable markers how you mark them it doesn't matter as long as as long as you think you understand what you uh, what you're doing and then uh, hopefully the other guy who is going to be working on your equipment is under going to understand what uh, what you've done as well so I pretty much try to work on those on those principles so, so, so it makes sense in that way. So it's like everything from S power supply, I know where these are going. And now everything from T power supply, I know where everything is going down there. So one power supply in here goes uh, the S plus and S minus uh, goes for the for the DC actuator. And my T goes for my sensors in here for the two and a four. So uh, one and a three will be for a plus and a minus from S power supply. And the two and the four will be plus and minus for a T power supply. So and from there on, we also send in the, from, from the T power supply, we also send in the power to our a, uh, um, a Mitsubishi controller, which is a DS version, which is the DC supply, 24 DC supply. So we send in here the plus and the minus. And so you can see down here, we've got a SS. And as any other sen as any sensor, uh, it requires minus so uh, or, or input uh, that's what i meant to say it requires a minus so basically by sending the minus in here from wherever whichever power supply you have some people like to have even separate power supplies for the inputs uh, for the uh, input separation uh, and then uh, rather than uh, uh, the actual uh, power supply for the controller you whichever control whichever power supply you're going to be using make sure that s is uh, that negative part of it is coming to rs and whichever sensors you're going to be using for switching like in here we're going to have to use in the switches for it and so and then and, and, and sensors down here we are sending the same power supply plus back to x1 2 3 4 and 5 and 0 forgot that but so make sure they they are both sources are coming from the same power supply and also here we go you can see my uh, s is coming down to my a uh, 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 outputs down here and you can see it goes goes straight into the com zero what are comms comms are basically where you are uh, what are you going to be switching pretty much you can be switching pretty much anything it's a relay so it can be no volts in there it could be 200 volts in there you could be 110 volts in there there could be 24 volt ac there could be all the dc is what exactly you are trying to switch and hence this controller has provided four comms so you can have four different powers powers going in it and uh, be, it can be switched uh, from the same controller. We are going to be using only one power for it, so we linked it all out. As you can see, that link for all the comms are linked out, and from there on, as you can see, the S is carrying on to a. Um, where is this other S going? Oh, other S is going in uh, in uh, powering 
our uh, board in in there for our actuator so and obviously the, the, then when it comes down to switches as you can see these these are all light so they're all going to need negative anyway so just you just take the as a core wire again you say take a negative uh, from the s power supply because these are going to be switched by output so you just send them all in here again make sure that the, whatever you switch in the positive you're switching in here the negative is on the other end from the same power supply so we send a negative in here bridge them all out so they're, they're all pretty much ready to be switched uh, ready for their control wires to come in and the same goes as well for the for the inputs we provided negative to our SS and then we send a plus plus all, all, all over here to bridge out all the all the uh, switches and those switches is gonna, are waiting for where they're going to be back in where they're going to be going back to this controller so that's pretty much the core wires so that's how the core wires are done so uh, once we've done the core wires we can crack on with our actual control wires which is going to be let's get all our x's in and get all our uh, y's in so let me get that done and i'll show you how that's done here we go all the control wires are in is actually quite straightforward as we already done all the core wires we do we we, we did all the, the 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 control wires so basically all the wires you send into whatever you want to switch whatever is contactors whatever they it is starting to drive or whatever you want to switch that would this is where your outputs would go so as you can see down here my outputs go in here the power power the the motor go forwards motor go in reverse and also it sends it sends from the same points it sends all four outputs in here and the all four outputs come through these lights in here so i know when the output is on the light will come on as well so and then the same goes as well as well for the axis all the axis are sent to uh, designated points which ones i want to be uh, uh, no receiving um, sort of which one is going to be switching and we'll send in a signal back to uh, to back to the board so you can see my my x01 and 2 are here for the sensor 1 sensor 2 and the pulsar and then i have uh, the other whatever's remaining down there which is uh, four, uh, three, four, five. i'll send them all down here for some form of switching and things like that so uh, that's pretty much how easy it is to build a panel because first you do your core wire then you do your control wires and, you, and then then you crack on with the programming so this is how it's pretty much done it's quite straightforward actually so let's power it up so once there we go the system is on the lights are powered up on on on, on the sensors you can see that there's a couple of inputs already coming on as you can that works all right that was all right so and then you uh, flip the switches you can see all of them are sending signals back and in a minute we're going to jump onto a laptop and test uh, the outputs to make sure everything is running as it should do and in the following video we are going to be starting creating some form of program so I'll see you in the computer here we are now we are in front of the computer so the program we're going to be using today it will be a gx works too and by the way one thing i forgot to say about uh the communications, there's two types of communications with FX3S, uh, you can use the SA09 cable for it or you can use the USB for it, so uh, we are going to be using USB because USB is by far a lot faster than uh, than the SA09 cable and plus the SA09 cables are getting sort of phased out, so uh, there are aftermarket uh, cables down there, but there are some of them prone to be not working, so uh, so yeah, we're going to be using the standard uh, micro USB, which works absolutely perfectly well. So let's load up GX Works too. And this uh, today we're just going to have a look at the uh, make sure we prepare everything for a next video. So uh, we've got a little uh, camera in here that's watching out what's going on down there. So let's put that in. Uh, let's create a, a quickly page project in here. You select what CPU you can be using. Obviously, we are an FX series, and then obviously it tells you what PLC uh, from FX series you're using. All the way to FX OS. Here we go. So you can do all these, all the, all, even the FX one, the really old ones. So it's all here. So you can do that with the uh, uh, GX Works uh, two. Uh, you can't do that in GX Works three because GX Works three is more, more, more or less made for a uh, FX five series. And then we're going to definitely just stick to the simple project and uh, and uh, and a basic ladder as well. So by clicking OK, that is good. So it opens up this. It's a bit much. This is where we can start programming. So we, can, we are here in a right mode. So check the communications. Double click on the bottom in here. Double click on that and uh, double click on the PC side of it. 
if you want to make sure that is on USB. If you're using SC09 cable, you are going to be on, oh my camera is switching on now, you are going to be on RS232C and then you have to go in there and select uh, what port it, it will be part of in uh, if you are using the RS232 port. But you can see some other videos where I am converting RS232 port to USB, so definitely check them out uh, when it comes down to uh, if you want to check that out how that works so i've done that I do the connect communication test here we go we are fully communicating with our plc and the only thing we're going to do today with that we just quickly double check make sure all our outputs are function as intended to do so for that we are going to go for monitoring and thing called batch monitor this is where you can really uh, monitor uh, or switch or play with whatever you want to play with so uh, when it comes down to internal uh, bits, and uh, for, what, for for once, if you can see, we can, if you go on the X's, we can click X0, and it's going to open the whole list of X's that are available. Obviously, it's not uh, not available in this PLC, but uh, it could be available part of the family. And uh, as you can see, my one and uh, zero and one is on, as we could see already in this video. And here, you can see those two red lights are on, so he already knows that is on. So, and then, then obviously all this, we're going to check out in a minute the pulsar, but uh, to get that pulsar working, let's go for the Y0, so it opens to all the Ys, and let's put it on. So double click on it, and in here you can see, oh, the belt's spinning, all good. So uh, if you take that one, actually, can we go, can we go, yes we can, if we go for the X0, you can see the pulses are coming in. So I'm not sure any of the inputs for this one is a fast counter, but that looks like he's so basically you can see he's going on and off, on and off. Uh, so uh, that's how pretty much that is. So Y zero again. So let's turn this one off. And as you can see there, when you click that one, that will go the opposite way. There we go. And then our uh, Y two just to some sort of indication I'll show you in the next video why why I decided to wire in Y2 and Y3 all the lights are coming on as they should do and uh, for, to, for next video we're gonna be playing a lot more with this uh, programming because uh, so why is we gonna be using some sort of indication so uh, and that will be it ladies and gentlemen I hope uh, that all makes sense and it gives you some good insight how to start building your own control panels do let me know in the comments below if there's something you are not understanding or something that I am not explaining as well as a, 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 I could have. So definitely your comments will make uh, things a lot more because um, uh, I can't see it from your perspective how much you see and how much you understand. So any comments down below uh, regarding and uh, what you do understand, what you don't understand will definitely help me to progress the videos better so you can understand it better. So, uh, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. If you liked that video, please smash that like. And uh, if you didn't, please smash the dislike. And uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.